Welcome to day 19 of the 30 day My D for Sock Analyst Challenge, which again is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring sock analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. If you're interested in following along, I would highly recommend that you pause the video and start from day one if you haven't done so already. By the end of this video, you will have an attack diagram that will walk you through on how you plan on attacking your target machine. And then what are your next steps are going to be once you have successfully compromised the machine and established a C2 connection. Let's get started. To get started with our attack diagram, I will be using draw.io, which we used in day one. To start, I'll go ahead and search up our server. This is going to be acting as our command and control server. I'll click on more results and let's see here. I'll drag in this traditional server and let's color it red. I'll name this as mythic C2. And I'll also, uh, let's bring in another traditional server. This one right here is going to be our Windows server. Windows server. And I'll also hold control D to duplicate this. And this will be our SSH server as well. Just in case we want to attack that later. But for now, we'll focus on our Windows server. Let's search up for computer. And we'll use this one here. This is going to be acting as our attacker computer. So attacker, uh, let's just say laptop. And it will be using Kali Linux. I'll color this as red as well. Perfect. Now let's add in a cloud. I'll just say this. So this will be our internet. And we don't need to make that VPC diagram or anything like that, similar to what we did in day one. My main focus here is just to create a simple attack diagram that will map out what we want to do. Our attacker laptop is going to be on a separate network, likely going to be a virtual machine that I'll spin up on my host. Whereas the Mythic C2 server is going to be spun up in our cloud provider, which is Vulture. I'll click on the text on the left hand side, and this will be our phase one phase one and i actually don't like the grid lines at the back so let's go ahead and uncheck grid there you go zoom in just a bit so it's a lot easier to see Alrighty, so our internet and windows server we are going to do brute force this will act as our initial access so i'll just connect that over there to our windows server i'll type in rdp brute force and hopefully we can get a successful login here. Actually, I'll change the phase one brute force to initial access, just like so. Let's grab all of the phase one icons and hold control D to duplicate. And let's just say we successfully logged in. Successful authentication. And let's make this green here. So I'll change the font color to dark green and we'll bold it as well. All right, once we successfully logged in via brute force, the next thing we wanna do is check our permissions. So let's change this to phase two, and this will be discovery. I'll move this out here for now, and let's copy our phase one icons again, drag this at the bottom, and my Windows server was not duplicated, so let's do that, connect this over. All right, so for the discovery, what are we trying to look for here? I'll remove this and say discovery. I'll click on the text icon just to add in some of the discovery commands that we plan on running. I'll use a who am I, IP config, net user, and net group. Once we've executed our four discovery commands, the next phase would be to reach out to our Mythic C2 server and download an agent. So I'll click on phase two and Duplicate this, let's change this to phase three, and let's say execution. I'm gonna go all the way up, and let's just duplicate our initial access icons again. So I'll remove the attacker laptop and put the Windows server just like this. Now let's connect this over to our internet and bring in our Mythic C2. So our agent is going to be hosted here. Now our Windows server is going to download our agent via PowerShell, and I am going to be using IEX, AKA invoke expression. This is just a way of using PowerShell to go out and download a particular file. And I'll say mythic 
agent. Let's copy all of the icons for phase three, duplicate that, and we'll change the direction here. So I'll click on the arrow key and change this one to none. Do the same for this one. Click on that and change this to none. So the mythic agent will then be downloaded over to our Windows server. And then let's do one more here. I'll copy the first one. Once our mythic agent is on our Windows server, we can then execute mythic agent. And now that I think about it, our mythic agent is likely going to be detected by Windows Defender. Before we even begin the execution phase, I am going to actually bring that all the way down here so we have some room to play with, duplicate it, and let's put this at the top. I'll change phase three execution to defense evasion. See, this is why it's good to plan it out. I'll remove these icons and let's copy the first one from phase one, duplicate that. And looking at phase two, it says discovery here. Let me just make a quick change. It'll say discovery via RDP. In other words, my attacker laptop will connect over to my Windows server using RDP, and then it will run these commands. And then with a successful RDP connection into our Windows server, connect that over. Let's disable Defender. And now, hopefully with our privileges, we can disable Defender. And then we can move on to this phase. So I'll drag this back up here. And this will be phase four, which is execution. So now once Defender is disabled, we can then reach out to our Mythic C2 server, download our Mythic agent. The Mythic agent will go onto our Windows server and our Windows server will execute that Mythic agent, which then begins our phase number five. Phase five, and that is command and control. So let's copy this, duplicate. Man, for some reason I cannot copy these icons, but that's okay. I'll type in establish C2. And then once we've established our command and control session, we could literally do whatever we want. Now for the sake of this challenge, before we actually commit and do all of this, let's create a fake file on our Windows server. And I'll just make sure to make a note out of this. Create fake password file called, oh, let's just say passwords.txt. This is the most easiest way of doing it. And yeah, for the sake of this challenge, let's create a fake password called passwords on the Windows server. And once we've established the C2, we can use the command and control session to download the passwords.txt file from our Windows server. And that will be our last phase, which is called exfiltration. And this will be phase number six. So scrolling up, let's copy this one where the arrows are pointing to the Windows server. Drag this down and we'll say download passwords.txt. And then we can see what kind of telemetry that generates. And this right here is our attack diagram. Starting with our phase number one, which is initial access. We'll use our Kali Linux machine to perform an RDP brute force attack towards our Windows server. Hopefully we'll get a successful authentication towards our Windows server. Once we do, we'll move on to phase number two. Phase number two will perform some discovery commands, which are who am I, IP config, net user, and net group. Now I am aware that there are multiple other discovery commands that you can use, but I'll leave that for you. Afterwards, we'll move on to phase number three, which is defense evasion. With an RDP established session, we will then disable Windows Defender on our Windows server. Once Defender is successfully disabled, we'll move on to phase number four, which is execution. By using execution, we'll be using PowerShell invoke expression to download our mythic agent on our C2 server. Once the mythic agent is downloaded, we will execute it and then it will move on to phase number five, which is command and control. With a successful established C2 session, we will then move on to phase number six, which will be exfiltration. We'll have a fake password file called passwords.txt on our Windows server for the sake of this challenge. And then we'll use the existing C2 session to download the passwords.txt file. And that's essentially it. This is how our attack diagram looks like and what our next steps are. Now, yes, we do have a SSH <laughs> server hanging out here, but if we wanted to attack it, we can create something similar. If you want additional practice, by all means, please create your own 
attack diagram towards SSH and then see what you can come up with. In the next couple videos, we'll begin setting up our infrastructure to perform this particular attack. Although it may be quite basic, but you now have an attack diagram that will map out your attack path and you have an idea as to what you want to do once you have successfully compromised your target's machine. I do want to state that I am not an expert in red teaming whatsoever, so please have mercy on me. In the next video, I'll walk you through on how you can begin setting up your own mythic server and we'll go over a brief walkthrough of the framework as well. As a reminder, I will be doing a giveaway where one lucky winner will win a free voucher for the MyD for Sock Analyst course. And additionally, there will be three one month passes for Try Hack Me. Details are provided in the description down below. If you're an aspiring Sock Analyst, I would highly encourage you to participate to level up your practical skills. And thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.